Welcome back to the Basic Beginners Free CAD course. In our previous couple of videos, we ventured into attachment and placement. We looked at the attachment modes for a plain left face and then went for a practical exercise where we attached sketches and text using the draft workbench to planar faces via various attachment modes. In this video, we're venturing into non planar attachment and looking at a number of options of how we would attach to a non planar face. Non-planar describes any surface or face that isn't flat. This doesn't lie entirely in one plane. Instead, it curves and bends in 3D space. Essentially, if you have a surface that isn't flat like a sheet of paper, it's considered non-planar. Now let's explore this further with a test project that will show the options for attaching to a non-planar face. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash m-a-n-g-0 or via paypal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash darren b e stone i also run a patreon where you can get early access and additional content and that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos so we're in freecad and i've started a new document and I'm in the part design workbench. We're going to create a simple sketch by using the create body and then the create sketch. This attaches the sketch along the base planes. We're looking along the XZ plane, side onto the object. Let's use the polyline to create our test profile. We'll place a diagonal line followed by a number of straight lines like so and the same on the other side. Right click to cancel the tool and right click to get the mouse points back. Let's use some equality. So nothing selected at the moment, use the equal. And we make these two equal, these two, and also these two as well. Right click to cancel the tool and we're going to use the constrain horizontal and vertical and just straighten up any lines we see, like so. Each of these from the polyline is a straight line. I'm gonna right click to cancel the tool and create an arc using the create arc by three points. If I look to the left, see I have the constraints in there. If we drop this little icon down, you'll see the auto constraints and the auto remove redundant is selected. Just going to click on the panel, get rid of that drop down. I'm going to come over, connect coincident to this point and coincident to this point, and then create the arc. Again, right click to cancel, and we'll create some tangency across this line and the arc using the tangent constraint. Okay, that, and do the same on this side, this arc and this line use the tangency and OK the pop up. So now we've got this shape. I'm just going to take the center of the arc and the vertical axis and use Winston constraint. This adds a point on object constraint, which is merged into the same tool. So what we have is a profile that has a number of straight lines, which will create planar surfaces when it's extruded. This arc will create a non-planar surface. So if I close this now, click on the sketch and use the pad tool. That's pad symmetrical to plane. And increase the length, something like 80 millimeters and hit OK. So we look at this now and bring this round to say the front view, you can see that this face is all on the same plane. Same as this one, this one, and all of these around the outside. The only non-planar face at the moment is the top one. So attaching a sketch to these ones is quite easy. We just select them and create our sketch. And you can see we're in line with that face. Let's close that. Let's take this face, create a sketch. And it's lined with that face, allowing us to sketch upon it. 
with no problems whatsoever. If I close and have a look at the sketch, we can see its flat face. The same as this one. Take both of those and hit delete. If I try to create a sketch against this face, we get the error message. You need a planar face as support for a sketch. So how do we solve this? There are a number of options. The first one I'm going to show you is that we select nothing from the screen. Just in some blank space, make sure nothing's selected in the tree view. We create a sketch. This will attach the sketch to the base plane. Now I'm looking for, say, a hole in the top here. We have to select the closest orientated plane, which is the XY plane. Now we've got the sketch. We come over to the model and look down and select that sketch. We see the map mode is flat face and the attachment offset at the moment is zeroed. So we can change this attachment offset by coming into the position and changing it, say, along Z axis. And we can place that sketch where we want it to go. And also orientate it using the angle and the axes. So if I add a sketch upon here, like so, come to task and hit close, that sketch is hovering above that face, and we can add the operation that we need. The trouble is, is this is quite complex. If this was, say, slightly slanted at an interesting angle, or if this surface was wavy or anything like that, then trying to get this into position can cause us a bit of an issue. My preferred route, let's delete that sketch, is to again make sure nothing's selected and create a sketch upon this base plane. Select the base plane that's going to represent the orientation of the sketch to start with, the XY plane in this case. Use the section view so we can see that sketch. Let's create some geometry in here, for instance, a hole. This can just be roughed out and we can come back to that at a later date. Let's close that. We see the sketch is sitting on the base plane. Now, if I change the attachment mode of this sketch, by looking down, we can see the map mode is flat face at the moment along the XY plane, that base plane. So we can change that attachment mode, the map mode. Using the map mode, let the button on the end. We get the attachment settings. At the moment, it's saying plane. Let's change this by clicking on the button and selecting the arc on one of the sides of the object. You can see the attachment mode has changed and the orientation of the sketch has changed as well. So this is for reference one. Let's pick reference two, make sure that's saying selecting, and pick this arc here. It now has appeared in position. So you can see it's been positioned there. It may be further down if this arc was more curved then this sketch will be embedded in the object. If that's the case, then we look along one of the axes over the Z and raise this up like so. So now we've got the sketch attached via an attachment mode. This is the preferred method. While I'm here, I just want to show you something. So if I have this sketch that's attached and I try to pad this now, it's not going to pad. And the reason is, if I cancel that, is that this is actually hovering above this face. So you can see it's hovering above there. If I take that sketch and pad it. If I select the reverse, you can see it's embedded into the object now. Another option, if I cancel that, if I come into the sketch, is to move the sketch down. Look at the attachment offset positioning and the z-axis and bring this down into the object. I can now pad up from the object, but we have to be careful. Look how the sketch is over this face here. If I took that sketch and used the pad, 
I'm going to see this, this gapping in here and this overhang. So we have to be wary of that. We could use symmetrical to plane to overcome that, like so. Or we could move the sketch down. Let's cancel that. The same if I took that sketch, you can see it's embedded into this face and use something like a pocket. Then it's going to leave some material behind. We could use two dimension. Therefore, we get the length forward and the length back. And we remove that from there. Another option, let's get rid of that sketch, is to use something called a datum plane. This one here. This creates an additional plane to sketch upon. First, make sure nothing's selected and select datum plane. It's also available from part design, create a datum, and then create one of the datum objects. In this case, the plane. We get the same type of attachment mode that comes up. Where it's saying selecting, we can select the same edges. And let's add another edge. Let's say let's add this edge here to add some angle. We've got the same offset. I'm going to offset this in the Z direction and hit OK. So I've got the plane placed. I can then select the face of the plane and create a sketch. And create my sketch like so. And hit close. And finally, we can pad this two dimensions like so. You can see we've got that angle there. We OK that. We can hide the datum plane. Word of warning, this adds another object to your project. So you're going to get some extra load on your CPU. And though it's very visual, there isn't really any need to add that datum plane. As shown, you can do that with just a sketch, the same kind of attachment. Let's just delete the pad, the sketch, and that plane. Press the spacebar, see it there, and hit delete. This time, I'm going to use a scaffolding sketch. For this, this is created via clicking, say, one of the planar faces, which is this one, and creating a sketch. Now, let's think of the angle that we want. We can use a line, constrained to, say, the center point, and I want the angle of the pocket to follow this, so I'm going to go something like this. We can strain it if we want to. I'm just going to hit close. So I have this sketch here. If I make sure nothing's selected, create a new sketch and select, say, the XY plane. Using the section view, let's say create a simple circle at the point of origin for the hole we want to create. Then after closing the sketch, we can see the sketch is actually on the bottom plane. Change the map mode of that sketch by coming down, looking at the map mode and using the button on the end. We can remove the XY plane by either deleting it or just pressing the button so we get reference one. And this time I'm going to select the edge of the scaffolding sketch, this one here. Make sure the reference one is saying selecting. So you can see the sketch has been attached to this edge. Let's use another reference and select the top vertex. We've got an arrow that's come up and we want normal to edge because we've got plane by three points, which needs another reference, but we only got two. We need normal to edge. That sets the normal of the sketch, in this case, in line with this edge. Let's hit OK. So we've got that there. Now we've got two options. We can make some adjustments to the scaffold sketch and bring this down close to the surface and use the attachment offset. Or we could look at the sketch we created 
a circular one, come into the map mode, normal to edge, and use the attachment offset in that one. So we've attached edge one, vertex two, and then we come down and we can add the offsets. So going to the Y position, it moves this way, which I don't want, but in the X position, I can move it in the correct direction. Something like that. I can bring this down onto the surface using the Z. Like so. I can then hit OK once I'm happy with the offset. Let the sketch and create the pocket. Remember, we need to use two dimension. And we can set the depth of the pocket, making sure we get the right one here. So let's go for this one. And we've got this indentation in here. Or I say through all. And make sure if you're going through all, use symmetrical to plane if you have that problem, which as part of the sketch is embedded into the object. That's non-planar attachment and how to achieve that. What I'm going to do now is take you through an exercise, something a bit more practical, and that is a light fitting. We're going to use non-planar attachment and also learn a new tool that will allow us to create a threaded hole using an ISO standard. So I hope you enjoy these videos. I hope you enjoy this course. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.